how did you evaluate the success of data teams? Great question. So, um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, the way in which businesses did business was really relationship driven. Yeah. So like, hey, I'll take you out to dinner and let's go talk and be friends and then we can do business together. Mm -hmm. And the way that people thought about how to expand businesses and expand relationships was also very, very qualitative and very based on, you know, how do we think this customer is feeling? Yeah. How do we think they are, you know, enjoying our product or not? And really not data driven. Yeah. And with the creation of customer success, there was also a really strong effort to um, strengthen those and back that up with data. So what could I do today? I could mm -hmm. start actually analyzing what does the data tell me about the happiness or the value or the ROI of my customer? So I'll just give you an example. You know, the most obvious is to look at product metrics, right? Like mm -hmm. how often is a customer using the product? Right. But then there's some data that you maybe not have thought about that could tell you a different story about that customer. Like for example, the number of support tickets that a particular mm. customer is using. Yeah. So the initial analysis, this is just, you know, kind of an anecdote, was that, you know, you might think that, um, you know, a particular, how the, the customer engages with the support team tells you about, you know, the, the, the level of engagement and value. And obviously, you know, if there's like so many tickets, there's maybe, yeah. I don't know, like tens of tickets a day per customer, that probably means that this customer is struggling and needs right. help, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not the only sign of distress. What if there's no tickets at all? that actually might mean a sign of disengagement. So someone who's totally not working with your uh, with your um, product. So yeah. what is the right number of tickets per day per customer that indicates a healthy customer? And what tells us that the customer is not in a good shape? Mm -hmm. And how do we use that across every single function we can learn from the behavior, you know, to sort of find leading indicators of health mm -hmm. and leading indicators of a customer that would want to expand and renew and a customer that actually is asking for help in, yeah. in, in a way. Mm -hmm. Organizations have been saying we are data driven for a long time, but it's really in the last five to 10 years that we're actually using data. Yeah. And I remember these were the first years where we're like, oh, we have data about our business. Let's start using it. Um, and that obviously sort of created a whole chain of events. Mm -hmm. But I think that was a tipping point when people really, really started using data to inform their work. Yeah. Um, and uh, I like the example you mentioned, how many customer support ticket is, is a good amount. Uh, so, for example, when you try to interpret those stories, when you try to understand and communicate with the customer or the business, a lot of times you don't know what is right. So how do you iterate the interpretation of the metrics and arrive at the correct answer? Oh, great question. If, if you know the answer, then let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone knows, yeah, you know, how to yeah. solve that. But I can tell you some mistakes that I've made that mm. I've learned from. Maybe the first mistake is to like, think that you can get the answer by like studying it deeply for a really <laughs> long time. You know, it's like if only I analyze the data a little bit more and like sit on this in my room and like stare at it, the answer will just come. No, like that's, it's, that's not how it works. Um, actually, like coming up with sort of an initial model as fast as possible mm. and testing it in the field and getting feedback from real customers. So for example, let's say, you know, you put together a hypothesis that there's some threshold, like let's say two tickets or less, it's really bad. Between two to 10 is great and 10 yeah. or more is also bad, right? Mm -hmm. So there's some distribution. And so the first thing you should do is like go to a customer and like ask, like, does this resonate with you? Like, am I crazy? Is this, you know, tell me a little bit about this. And then maybe talking to customers from each of those groups, right? The disengage and the engage groups mm -hmm. and sort of testing that out. And so um, as you know, as soon as possible, can you get into the hands of real customers? Like they sort of like get out of the building and actually test it. Um, the more informed your model, the better, the better your model will be. Um, I think that's sort of one, you know, maybe my biggest learning yeah. in, in how to get this right, so to speak. Um, but also recognizing that it's actually less about getting it right. And it, it's, you know, there's, there's like, the academic idea of can I get something perfect mm -hmm. when actually in reality like people are not perfect and businesses are not perfect but making progress and improving you know if the outcome of that exercise is that you identified you know a hundred customers that were struggling and you move them from like the red zone to the yellow zone to the green zone that's a huge win right yeah. and so maybe 
you know, your analysis wasn't perfect and your thresholds were not perfect, but you actually like made a difference mm. and made more customers happy using that. That's huge, right? Like I'll take that any day over like the alternative. I have a hypothesis that like everyone inside is like a recovering perfectionist mm -hmm. and we all like don't want to screw it up. And <laughs> so we sit on it so much until we think it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, you definitely, there's a balance to it, right? It's definitely like you don't want to put something in front of a customer that's not going to be helpful to them or not mm -hmm. represent you well, right? I think that makes sense. But also there's a saying like if you haven't, if you're not shipping something that you're not embarrassed by, then you're kind of shipping too late. I think the most important thing is about, you know, being frank and honest about that. So you can go to a customer and say like, hey, this is actually like not done. It's very early thinking. Mm -hmm. It's very likely wrong in many areas. What I'd love your help on is focusing and narrowing in on what are the things to fix or what are the things that are important to get right. I'll just give an example from our world, actually. Mm -hmm. So at Monte Carlo, we spend a lot of time on making sure that the data that we are surfacing to our customers is actually valuable. Um, and part of it is um, actually like getting the model right. So making sure that, you know, um, uh, there's a very low uh, percentage of uh, alerts that are actually like false positives mm -hmm. or not meaningful to customers. But over time, what we've learned is that there are additional ways to make data valuable to customers, which is actually understanding which data is owned by which team. So for mm -hmm. example, let's say, you know, um, a specific person owns the marketing data, they don't care about the, any anything that's related to the financial data. That actually has nothing to do with how we're analyzing the data or modeling it. It has to do with the organization of that business and that process and how the people are working. And that is a learning that we would never have if we didn't actually talk to customers and actually take, you know, kind of take it to the next level and really understand what it means to make this data um, relevant to this person. Mm.